Regarding quality 10, what does a soul-based understanding that divine truth does not allow the lie, no matter what the price, look like in my personal life? Well, it's going to change a lot of your personal life, I would suggest. Yeah. Um, you know, the world we live in is constantly wanting the lie to be told. When you start telling the truth instead, then there'll be a lot of changes in the world in which you live. <laughs> you know, you have people around you in an uproar at different times, potentially. You'll have your own life improving as uh -huh. a result because you're not engaging the error all the time. You're now engaging truth. And it's like whenever you engage truth, you're actually... You're, you're really creating a future for yourself of happiness. Mm. Whenever you engage lie, you're in creating a future where you'll be unhappy. Mm -hmm. So you might be happy right now telling the lie, but you're engaging a future that's going to be unhappy. Yeah. And you might be unhappy telling the truth right now, but you're engaging a future that's going to be happy. <laughs> that's a wonderful uh, concept, I feel. It's yeah. like uh, long-term joy or short-term avoidance, really, is Yeah, what's... or short-term seeming gain, yeah. which is not actually a gain because your soul is degrading every time you lie. So, mm. so if you understood divine truth never lies and always tries to expose the lie, you would live a life that does the same thing, yeah. exactly the same thing in every aspect of your life. So you'd never want to cover over the lie of yourself. Mm. So you'd never want to be a facade you would never cover over the lie with others. So you, when other people want you to lie for them, you'd never do it. Mm -hmm. You would never cover over the lie in terms of the discovery of new universal truth. So whenever you discover a new universal truth, even though it might confront the world you're living in, you'll still tell it. Yeah. Right? And there's been plenty of people historically have done that on a scientific basis and being ridiculed initially and then and tried to be punished initially, but after time, you know, eventually the whole world has accepted some of these universal truths. And I suppose the part of that that is really powerful is that we never lie or allow the lie against God's truth without addressing that, mm -hmm. no matter what the price. You're talking about people who are not lying and telling the truth about certain things, yep. but they were willing to do that no matter what, what the happens, personally or globally. Yes. They were willing to stand by truth. Yes. What they knew at that time. Yes. It's, um, such, a, it, it, it's such a courageous position when you think about it. Yes. Because, it, because the world around you is, is, is immersed in error and immersed in pain and suffering, of which it wants to believe it's not the cause. Mm -hmm. It wants to believe that some other thing is the cause. It wants to believe God is the cause. It wants to believe that some other person is the cause. It wants to believe that nature is the cause or whatever the belief is. It wants to believe that it's not the cause. Yeah. Humanity itself is not the cause. Yeah. And so when you expose the truth, God's truth about these things, and you actually start saying, no, 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 humanity is the cause of all of these pain and this pain and suffering that's occurring on this planet and here's the reason why it's the cause mm -hmm. if the person doesn't want to hear that they get angry and try to defend their position and they'll even be willing to resort to murder and 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 even war in order to prevent this truth from being known yeah. now in that place you've got to be willing to pay the price mm. the price of staying in harmony with truth is that error will want to attack you yeah. That is the price. Now, from God's perspective, that's a beautiful prize because in the end, once the error is exposed and released, now we have the ability to move forward in love and move forward in truth and understand and have more happiness. But initially, if we don't have that viewpoint that, that no matter what the price, I'm going to stay in harmony and truth, there is no chance for change. And this is why the Dark Ages occurred. You know, we had nearly 2,000 years or a good solid, you know, 1,500 years almost of human history where religious suppression of truth caused mankind to not change and grow for nearly 1,500 years. Mm. That's why it occurred, because there was the suppression of truth. People wanted the lie. People wanted to tell the lie and hear the lie, mm. right? Once we are courageous enough to say, no matter what the price, we are going to confront this, 
change can begin to occur. Now, there were people scientifically and religiously after the, near the end of the Dark Ages that started to confront this religious error and this belief system based error of wanting the lie. And when they started to confront it, many of them were murdered. Many of them were placed in prison for all of their life. Many of them were, you know, had their lives completely destroyed, but they held on to the fact that they were doing the right thing and living in harmony with divine truth. Mm -hmm. Now, the beauty of doing that for them was they passed into very nice conditions of love in the spirit world, so they didn't have to endure the hells of the spirit world. But also, we, humanity, have benefited from their courage. Yeah. We collectively benefited from their courage, courageous position of holding on to the truth and not allowing the lie. Mm. And this is the beauty is that when we do that, other people will benefit from our courageous position. Yeah, and I can think of an example from your personal life where um, you've actually been willing to speak the truth in your family environment mm -hmm. and exposed some errors and dishonesty that had happened. And for a period of time, everyone in your family blamed you. Yep. Nobody wished to speak to you. No. Uh, even though you hadn't perpetrated, you just told the truth about some oh, I other... didn't do it. I just told the truth about it. Yeah. And, everyone... and they wanted to shoot the messenger of truth. <laughs> yeah, for a number of years. Mm -hmm. And yet just recently we spent some time with your family and actually the people involved have actually stopped blaming you, mm -hmm. all bar one maybe, mm -hmm. and a number of them have actually um, been able to make better choices based on more informed, uh, they have more information yes. about their lives. Yes. But also they've begun to work through certain emotions that they were avoiding by avoiding the truth. Yes, and that was my underlying desire in the initially, was yeah. to help them go through things. They were holding on to things that I thought were damaging to their lives and were damaging their lives because every time you hold on to an error and don't you know, honour the truth, you are damaging your life. Mm. And then as, as that was corrected, their lives are getting better. Some of them, their lives, they have embraced the change yeah. uh, of acknowledging the truth much more readily than others. And the ones who have embraced the change of acknowledging the truth have had a benefit immediately or over a period of time that they've embraced the truth have had a benefit to their life. But what I see is that it took a lot of faith in you in this principle that, that um, not allowing the lie would actually bring about um, change. You yes. had to have a lot of courage and a lot of um, but dedication also, to that. Also for me, it wasn't as hard a decision as you might imagine because even though I was aware that I might lose all of my family um, and for a part time I did, um, I still would have found it much more difficult to not tell the truth. Mm -hmm. um, it, would have, it would have had a terrible effect on myself personally but also I would have just found it much more difficult to do. Which tends to indicate you had a soul-based understanding of this exactly. divine truth. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I find that if people find it easy to lie, then it means that there is not a soul-based understanding of this truth within them. Mm -hmm. If mm -hmm. they find it slipping out of them, <laughs> the lies, like, yeah, yeah. Um, then it means that they, are not, they don't understand the power of the truth and the beneficial effects that the truth can have in their life. Whereas you had a feeling that there was a much higher price for lying than telling the truth, even though yes. telling the truth meant you lost your entire family and were vilified by your family for a period yeah. of time. Yeah. Actually lying was a higher price. Yes, and that's an to myself but also to my relationship with God but also to them. Mm. It was a higher price to them because if the truth wasn't exposed, there would have been a much longer time period where the lie was believed and when the truth was finally discovered, even if it was in the spirit world that it was finally discovered, it would have been devastating to the people involved. Yeah. Mm. So that indicates that you had already a soul-based understanding that divine truth does not Correct. allow the lie. Yeah. yeah. Okay, some other things that we've uh, listed here as examples of how our life would look mm. with this soul-based understanding. I honour God by always stating and living the divine truth in all situations. Yes. Now, in situations where everyone accepts me doing it, it's quite easy. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, when, when, I, when I'm all comfortable doing it and everyone around me is comfortable with me doing it, then it's quite easy. Now, there's no time on earth where that's possible. There are places in the spirit world in the, when you should become at one with God where you can just sit down with all your friends and all of you are in divine truth and in personal truth constantly and it's so easy a life, just an easy <laughs> life. 
But living here on Earth, it's much more difficult because the majority of people, as we've discussed, want the lie because they want to avoid their emotional, painful experiences. As a result of that, telling the truth then becomes much harder and particularly telling God's truth becomes extremely difficult. When you tell your truth, it's not so difficult because people can go, oh, but that's just your truth. Mm -hmm. But when you say to people, no, this is actually God's truth about the situation, mm -hmm. now it's a lot more difficult because now there's this supposition they make. You're, they're basically saying, you're saying to me that this is God's truth. You're saying to me that you've got some kind of special connection with God and you're able to tell me what God's truth is. This is what you're saying to me? You know? And so there's a lot more negative emotion projected at you when you say to people, no, this is a truth that I've learned about the universe. That is God's truth. Mm -hmm. And this is why anybody who's discovered divine truth of any kind, whether it be physical, emotional or spiritual in nature, have always had to endure for a period of time generally a lot of opposition on the earth. Mm -hmm. So even if they've been a scientist who's discovered some physical fact about the universe, they've often had to, do, to put up with some attack. And the reason why is because there's just a large amount of desire of people on earth to avoid understanding truth because of trying to avoid their own personal emotional experiences. Now, until that changes, it's going to be a bit of a labour mm. of love to live in a state of truth on the planet. However, without people being willing to do it, it's never going to happen. Mm. Unless people are willing to do it, it's never going to change. So it needs, there needs to be people who are willing to do it. Yeah. And, and that's where courage is going to be required. Mm. Mm. Okay. So also I would feel emotionally the pain of mankind who ignores or denies divine truth. Yes. So what, what I would do is I would honestly examine the results of living the lie. So what, what I would do is instead of, instead of thinking that this is normal, mm. so, you know, what, what we often hear on, on the world, in the world around us is that this is a normal life and everybody generally believes this is a normal way of doing things, a normal life. Even when it's totally unloving and totally out of harmony with truth, they think that's normal. Well, once we understand this particular divine truth, that God's truth is always trying to expose a lie, we never accept as normal something that is not normal from <laughs> God's perspective. Yeah. In other words, we go, no, this isn't normal. This is human creation, not God's creation. This is what humans have decided to create because of their denial of truth. Uh, and we expose that. We say, no, well, the reason why we've got this pain and suffering and that pain and suffering collectively and individually is not because we're accepting the truth. It's because we're accepting or believing and emotionally loving the lie. That's the reason why we've got this pain. Mm. And we need to honour that. We need to honour the fact that this pain will continue. The suffering will continue while we continue to honour the lie. Mm. And, and if we can make sure that we do that and, and everybody does that eventually, then none of us will eventually ex end up accepting that the life we're currently living that's full of pain and suffering is actually the life that God created us to live. Yeah, yeah, and that probably links to this next point, which was, I feel a personal emotional pain when I personally ignore or deny divine truth. Yes. So in other words, in, instead of trying to tune ourselves away from the pain... Yeah. What we do instead is we acknowledge the pain and we acknowledge the source of its creation, which is ourselves or mankind collectively. So instead of going, oh, God's to blame for this pain or there is no pain, yeah. we go, no, there is pain. We do have pain and suffering. The reality is many of us experience on a day-to-day -day level, physically, emotionally and spiritually, we are experiencing pain on a day-to-day -day level generally. What we do is we acknowledge that this pain exists and this pain exists because we haven't accepted God's truth about some things. Probably lots of things if we have lots of pain. Mm -hmm. And instead of telling ourselves that someone else is to blame, and instead of telling ourselves that we don't really have much pain at all when we do, we honour the truth and we acknowledge our responsibility. Yeah. And that's a part of not lying to ourselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, I don't have to push myself to live in a place of divine truth. It's automatic. Yes, and this is something that we need to understand too, is that if I'm pushing myself to, to tell the truth, 
but I don't have a feeling to tell the truth, yeah. then that tells me that it's not automatic in me to tell the truth. And if it's not automatic, there's an emotional reason inside of me that's error-based that causes it to not be automatic. And I'm going to have to, at some point, find that emotional reason and release it if I want the process of telling truth to be automatic. Yep. That's what I'm going to need to do. Yep. And until that point in time, I'll have to try to tell the truth and often I will fail. <laughs> right? We need to acknowledge that every time a person is, tries to tell the truth but fails and finishes up telling a lie, that it's because they don't have the feeling in them to tell the truth mm. for some reason. And usually that reason is they're afraid of what the exposure of the truth or the, sorry, the, what the truth exposes, the lie that the truth exposes, will cause. They're afraid of the emotions that are going to be involved. Yeah, I, I, I would have put myself in that category you were just talking about, about finding it that, I'm ha that I was having to push myself to tell the truth um, because of all these fears. Lately, I find I'm automatically telling the truth and then I'm and then freaking go, out. <laughs> <laughs> Oops, <laughs> like, that happened automatically and I, oh, I'm not used to that and I'm a bit afraid still about, yeah. about how everyone's going to respond to that. And that indicates that there is a change happening in the soul when we get to that point where we catch ourselves telling the truth even though we thought, well, oh, like, <laughs> yeah. I don't know if I should have done that, you know. Yeah. And that, that means that the change is starting to occur at the soul level where we're starting to now really value the truth and mm -hmm. value the exposure of the lie and value the fact that exposing the lie exposes the error and exposes the, the sad and negative emotions. And, and we value that so much that, uh, that it's inside of us now, that we can't avoid it anymore. So it seems wonderful. to take more effort to generate a lie, like, or it seems like emotionally it feels like a waste of time to lie. Totally. Because you it get to feels a... like the truth's going to be exposed anyway and I'm not even going to get anywhere unless I can face the truth about myself. So why, why even try to do something else? Well, you get to the point even beyond that where it's so freeing to just say the truth all the time that you don't know how to construct a lie anymore. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you don't even know how to do it anymore. It would, ha it would take effort to construct a lie. Well, it would take lie. far more effort than just telling the truth. And yeah. in fact, lies do take far more effort both in the short term and in the long term to mm. tell than the truth does to tell. Mm. Mm. Yeah. But, but you don't feel that unless, unless you've got that emotionally in you. You know, while there's all this error emotionally in you saying, no, no, be afraid of the truth, be afraid of the emotion that's going to come up in them or in you, you don't believe any of that. Yeah. It's only once you've released all that emotion that you start going, wow, it's just a breeze to tell the truth. It's mm. such a lovely life. I don't know why I didn't do it all the time before. <laughs> <laughs> and I found that a lot of my lying was not necessarily the words I said, but the demeanour the facade I presented to the world. And this of is course. the bit that is slipping seriously for me, yeah. where it just, oh, there's the real me just came out yeah. uh, because I can't be bothered with this facade anymore. Exactly. But I'm a bit freaked out now how everyone's going to respond to that yeah. uh, because I'm so unaccustomed to it. You know, I, I wouldn't have said that I even told. Or it feels like more of a lie when we present a different version of ourselves yes. to everyone. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And, and this is the beautiful thing once we work through this emotionally is we start feeling impelled to tell the truth and we get to the point where it, it's impossible to construct a lie, mm. let alone tell it. Mm. And, and in fact, we, become, we, we also then have a lie radar <laughs> where anybody who lies to us, we know they've just constructed it and we don't have to even confront them with it if we didn't want to or if they reject the confrontation. We just go, yeah, I know they lied, you know, and yeah. we don't get upset about it or anything, but we just have that radar about it. We, we know we can't trust what they're saying under those circumstances. Yeah, we were watching a program where someone said their one superpower is to tell if someone's lying. So yeah. we get that superpower. Yeah, know? yeah. In the end, uh, you get a lot of superpowers once you engage <laughs> the relationship with God. But, but one of them is this ability to just have a radar for lie. Like, you know when you're getting lied to. And it becomes then easy because you don't have believe them. You don't mm. believe the lies yeah. anymore. Yeah. 
and and therefore you don't put or make choices or decisions based upon your, the lies anymore. Mm. And that, that's a beautiful thing. You, you know, your life positively changes when you don't do that. Certainly. Mm. Okay, the final couple we've got here. So if we have a soul-based understanding that divine truth does not allow the lie, no matter what the price, mm -hmm. we don't resist hearing the truth out of fear ever. No. So we love the truth. We don't love the lie. When you love the lie, you resist the truth. Mm -hmm. When you love the truth, you don't resist the truth anymore. You love it. You desire it. You want it. Yeah. You don't try to avoid it. So the majority of people who, who um, interact with us still don't love the lie. They, they, sorry, don't love the truth. Yeah. They love the lie. Yeah. They want the lie. And when you tell them the truth, it's like, oh, you know, oh, you feel it in them. Oh, this, every time <laughs> this terrible feeling. That's an indication they still love the lie. Yeah. When yeah. you love the truth, you don't feel like that anymore. I find that I, there's this growing love for the truth and like the power of it and how beautiful and simple and, yeah, just powerful and freeing it is. Mm. But at the same time, it exposes my fear. Yes. And this is where... And if you're unwilling to feel the fear... Yeah then, of course, you're going to have some trauma. It's hard to continue the love affair with truth until you're willing to be humble with the, the fear. Exactly. Yeah. Once you're humble with the fear and allow yourself to experience, you'll love the truth all the time. Yeah. Once you allow yourself to just feel the terror, feel the terror, feel the terror, whenever it comes up, you will always love the truth. You'll mm -hmm. love to, to receive it under all circumstances and conditions. You won't be avoiding it in any way. You won't be resisting it. You'll never revert to shooting the messenger <laughs> of truth, ever. Yeah. Yeah. You will always want it. Yeah. And you'll value the people who tell you the truth. See, at the moment, most people on the planet still value people who tell them the lie. Because Very it, true. Because yeah. it supports their denial and supports their emotional addictions. Yeah. That, a person who tells the truth is often ostracised or criticised. Mm. Now, if, if we were in a different condition where we loved the truth, we wouldn't criticise or ostracise people who tell us the truth. Mm. We would want them in our life. Uh, yeah, and to me... Uh, beginning again to feel that the people who really honour truth are like the bright lights in my life. Yes. They're the people that I feel more drawn to. Yes. And I also feel they're the only people that I can experience any level of closeness with. Of course, because this is another quality of truth in that it, it, it exposes emotional closeness. It, it, it encourages it, in fact. Yeah. And this is something we'll cover in another in other sure. questions. Yeah. Okay, final one on this, uh, this quality 10. When I have a soul-based understanding of this truth, I desire truth with all my heart because I understand its power. Yes. This is about honouring divine truth, like honouring the fact that all truth comes from God. So all the truth is absolute in its nature. It's universal in its, in its scope. And it, because it comes from God... It, ha it has unlimited power. It, it, it is able to change events, situations and all sorts of things as a result of engagement of the truth. Mm -hmm. Once I truly honour that from an emotional perspective inside of myself, I then am honouring God more. I'm honouring the fact that the way in which I can develop a closer relationship with God is by honouring his truth, honouring this universal truth. And it's so beautiful being able to honour the universal truth in that regard. Also, every time that I get away from truth, I realise that actually I'm not honouring God anymore. I'm not honouring the creator. I'm not honouring the person who made this universe possible. I'm not honouring the person who created me. Every time I get away from truth, I realise that I, I am actually in some ways trying or attempting to pull down God, yeah. pull down his universal creations. Of course, it, it's a flawed attempt from the beginning. Mm -hmm. It's never going to work. But, but it is the attitude that I have towards God when I dishonour the truth. Mm -hmm. uh, any truth, scientific, emotional, physical or spiritual. Whenever I, I dishonour those things, I dishonour God. Mm -hmm. Because God is the source of all that truth. Mm -hmm. All of that truth is the truth about the universe. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, very powerful. Thank yes. you.